Welcome to the Tabletop Simulator tutorial series. I'm Kimiko with Berserk Games, and this tutorial series will go over all the different tools, custom content, and the various things you can do in Tabletop Simulator. The second episode in the series will go over the advanced controls. If you missed the first one, I highly recommend checking that out first. All of the info I'm going over can be found in the help menu in game, which you can bring up by pressing the question mark key on your keyboard or the button next to the enter key if you are not using a US keyboard. You can also find more in-depth info in our knowledge base on our website, which will be posted in the description below. Additionally, most controls can be found in the contextual menu, which you can bring up when you right-click on an object. Now let's get started! If you want to change the size of an object, you can easily do so by hovering over or holding an object and pressing the plus or minus keys. This is a quick way to uniformly scale an object bigger or smaller when you need to make adjustments. You can scale objects individually or box select to scale multiples at once. Did you know there's a blindfold option? Certain games require players to not be able to see what's going on, so this is our version of a blindfold. Just press the B key and the curtain will fall down to block your view of the table. While you can read the chat, you will not see any messages of other players who are blindfolded or unblindfolded. Just press B again to remove your blindfold or click the button on screen. To quickly group items together that can stack, just hover over the objects and press G. If the objects are stackable, they will stack or group with its own object type. This works great for poker chips, cards, checkers, and other stackable objects. One thing people are not usually aware of is an alternative to alt zooming. If you want to be able to see everything and not just a specific object, you can press the M key to magnify areas on the table. While holding down M, move all around so you can see everything close up. Then scroll with your middle mouse button to zoom in and out. Another thing you can do is press and hold the N key to nudge objects around. You can now push objects around without having to pick them up. If you need to quickly place objects beneath another without moving anything, then hover over the object and press the U key. This is great for placing a card underneath a mat, for example. This only works if the objects are unlocked. To see the back side of a card without turning it over, hover over the card and Alt Zoom, then press the Shift key at the same time to see the underside. This is called Peek and can be used on any object in game. When you peek at a card, an eye symbol of your color is shown on the card you are looking at, so others know you are peeking at those particular cards so make sure you are only doing this when you are supposed to. The Alt key is also used as a modifier, which means you can do other things by holding Alt in addition to other controls. While holding an object, press Alt plus Q and E or Alt plus scrolling with your middle mouse button to flip objects on a different axis other than normal. This is great when creating a domino toppling setup or building a house of cards. Pressing Alt plus F or Alt plus the middle mouse button will rotate objects on their other axis as well. Pressing Alt plus right mouse button or Alt plus T will drop the last grabbed object or drop the last card of a deck or object from bags. You can do this to drop multiple objects quickly or just one object at a time. A very useful feature that is not widely known is how you can place a card on the bottom of the deck without having to pick up the entire deck first. While holding the card, Press and hold your right mouse button and guide it under the deck. Voila! Another cool thing to do with cards is if you need to draw more than one, you can do it directly from the deck. Pick a card and while holding it, hover over the deck and press your right mouse button to grab other cards. Did you know that you can set up different camera positions? Right click anywhere that isn't an object to bring up the global contextual menu. You will see a few options we've gone over previously, but there's also the option to load and save camera positions. First, move your camera exactly where you'd like it to be. Now you want to save this position by clicking on Save Camera and then choose an open number slot. You can also use hotkeys to make it go faster by pressing Ctrl and a number. Then, move your camera around and when you want to quickly go back to this position, then click on Load Camera and the number you previously saved it as, or use the hotkey Shift plus number. Some important controls can be found in the Host Options menu. Just click the Options button at the top and Options once more. These are settings that you can mess around with in single player, but when you're in a multiplayer game, the host can decide what options to use and what permissions are set to allow or disallow players from doing certain things. There are three different physics modes you can choose from. Full means that full physics are on. Objects can be thrown and knocked down. 
If you want the most realistic experience, then this is for you. If you want a bit more control, then you would choose semi-lock, where the physics are a bit toned down. Pieces can be thrown, but when they bump into static objects, they won't get knocked over. And if you want a completely serious game, then you'll want to choose locked, where physics are reduced. Objects can no longer be thrown, lowered, or clumped together. The scripting option toggles whether the host wants scripting to be enabled in their server. Keep in mind, if you turn this option off, then any game that uses scripting will not work unless they made a non-scripted version. Gravity lets you control how fast objects fall. This can be fun for any spacey theme, or just silly fun in general. The Permissions tab lets the host choose what features they want enabled on the server. If you don't want anyone to flip the table, then just uncheck it. If you don't want people to draw things with the vector or paint tools, then you'd uncheck that as well. Just hover over each option to read the tooltip to see what they can and can't do. Some final things you can do is press slash help in both the game and global tabs as they each have different information. You can see how to change your nickname, message people, and the host can do things like kick and ban. And one last and very important thing is to not forget about clicking your name on the top right. That's how you can change your color or your team. And the host can click on other names to do admin commands. You can also click on someone's icon next to their name to view their Steam profile or add them as a friend. And there you have it! That's going to wrap up this video about the advanced controls in Tabletop Simulator. The next video will go over how you can create a custom game in Tabletop Simulator from start to finish. So stay tuned and see you next time!